Well, thank you, Aram, for that uh, international news segment there. Now, we are going to move on to some news a little closer to home. South Korea's busy capital has a brand new tourist attraction now. In uh, some sense, it's more like a successful transformation instead of being uh, discarded. A disused overpass, overpass rather, has been given a new lease of life. Our Hwang o Jun introduces us to the garden that's hanging in the sky. December 13, 2015, was a day this whole station overpass was once and for all closed to car traffic. The overpass was built in 1970 to cope with a surging population and to alleviate traffic jams, but in 2006, it failed to pass the annual safety inspection, getting a D, and that led to calls for it to be completely torn down. But instead of getting rid of the overpass, Seoul decided to give it a drastic facelift. For 45 years, this whole station overpass was a symbol of industrialization with tens of thousands of cars using it on a daily basis. And after 18 months of construction, the road for cars is now a road for people. It also has a new name, Seoul Lo 7017. The name Seoul Lo translates to Seoul Street. 7017 references the road's birth and reincarnation, built in 1970 and reopened in 2017. But the number 17 carries even more meanings than that. The overpass is 17 meters off the ground and connects to 17 different pedestrian roads, which lead to many tourist attractions via walkways, elevators, and escalators. A variety of performances and exhibitions will also take place throughout the year. Seems like a botanic garden right in the middle of this concrete jungle. So I really like it. In modern cities nowadays, you get more and more cars, more and more pollution, more and more traffic, less and less nature, less and less green. So just re-establishing this form of automobile bridge into something for actually people living here, enjoying the quality of the city, it's amazing. I used to drive often on the Seoul station overpass, so I was a bit worried when the city first decided to close it down for construction because I thought it would worsen the congestion nearby. But now that I'm actually here on the opening day with my family, I'm personally quite glad because it feels like the city is becoming more people-friendly, providing a place like this for people to enjoy. Also sporting the nickname Sky Garden, the overpass was designed by a renowned Dutch architect named Winnie Maas, who took first place in Seoul's 2015 International Design Competition. Just like its nickname, the kilometer-long pedestrian park features more than 24,000 trees and plants of 228 species, most of which are arranged throughout the overpass in the order of the Korean alphabet Hangul. We have cities where many people have different characters, and that's the same with, uh, with our plant world. So we immediately thought that we would make, the, to show that explicitly to, uh, to uh, Korea, and to, to make it as a kind of library where you could go and see what you want to, uh, to have. The project focuses on two long-term visions for the city, which are to encourage urban restoration and tourism on foot. If development in the past was about completely demolishing an old bit of infrastructure to build something else on top, urban restoration is about keeping and making use of the structure, thereby cutting down on waste and revitalizing the local economy as well. Seoul Law 7017 is both the starting point and the model for such efforts. Seoul is known for its dynamic atmosphere, as seen in the coexistence of modern technology and a long history. With the reopening of Seoul 7017, the Korean capital is now setting an example for how an urban eyesore can be transformed into a beautiful oasis and an escape from the city. Hwang Wo-jun, Arirang News.